Okay, what's up YouTube? Today I'm talking about the Fujifilm 23mm 1.4. So uh, let's get into it. Okay, so this bad boy right here, Fujifilm 23mm 1.4. Got my notes, let's get into it. Okay, so for the first section, we're gonna talk about image sharpness, distortion, and fringing. Uh, these are three things that I wanted to touch on real quick in this review, which is image sharpness. I really don't have any problems. Uh, I'm not gonna do a ton of pixel peeping in this video real quick, but here's an image, here's the center of, of the image, and here's the corner of the image. But this is shot at 1.4, so you can see the, uh, the sharpness difference. This lens sharpness wise is on point and it does what I need it to do. Image distortion, I don't really see any image distortion when I'm taking, like there's not any wonky heads, like if you shoot at a weird angle, you're not gonna get like somebody's forehead that's gonna be like a mile long. Like it's, it's a pretty, pretty solid lens between sharpness and no distortion. Fringing is where I, it starts to fall apart for me. I'm shooting a lot of backlit subjects. I'm at the beach shooting sunset, sunset portraits for families. And uh, it's kind of hit or miss for me. Sometimes there's no fringing, and then just depending on the light, I got fringing for days. I've got purple around the people, green around all the, the palm trees and seagrass, uh, and, it, and it takes an extra 10 minutes to get rid of that in post without like affecting the colors of the people. So fringing-wise, that's the one negative when it comes to image quality. But besides that, and for 90% of the other stuff that I'm doing that's not heavily backlit, I don't have a problem with fringing. I really like this lens and the image quality is on point. Build quality wise, it's a totally metal lens. It's not weather sealed, but uh, I have shot with it in light rain. It's got splash before. It's not gonna kill it, but don't push it. Like you don't wanna push a not weather sealed lens very much, uh, but it's a solid built lens and it's all metal. Uh, it's got the little cool clutch thing that everybody tends to like. I don't really like it that much, but uh, I'll get to that in a second. So build quality, it's fantastic. Feels great. Feels great paired with an X-H1, X-H, X-T2, X-T3, or now the X-T4. So pairs great with any of those lenses and fits the body style perfectly. Uh, and if you grab one of these uh, cool little lens hoods, I think it makes it look even cooler. So, And uh, adds a little bit of protection to the lens element there in the front. So yeah, that's what I got going on. Another important section of a lens is autofocus and manual focus. Manual focus, like I was just talking about, you got the cool little clutch thing that uh, you can switch to manual focus and boom, boom, boom real quick. Uh, autofocus for photography works just fine. I'm not shooting high, high speed action, uh, you know, sports, wildlife photography. I'm normally shooting stationary either products or people or if I'm going out and doing like street photography or like landscape stuff, I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to catch stuff fast focus. So focusing speed, is not that big of a deal. If you're worried about focusing noise for shoots, people really don't care. Uh, if you're in a situation where sound is an issue, this won't be. Uh, a lot of cameras, like the Sony's shutter is louder than this thing focusing. So that's the focusing noise. It's not loud, doesn't bug me one bit. So uh, overall for photography, focusing works fine. I have no, I have no uh, problems with this lens focusing for photography. Okay, now we're gonna talk about videography and like video, using this lens for video. So all of the image quality things apply to this lens. It's sharp, no distortion, uh, Fringing can happen if it's very backlit. Uh, it all applies to the video portion of this video. Um, but the thing that matters in the video section is autofocus and manual focus. Uh, autofocus, that's when if you're rocking a shotgun mic and you're trying to do autofocus, it's not the best. You're gonna hear it on the mic. So I would avoid using this lens in autofocus Autofocus, I would avoid using this lens in autofocus if you're putting a mic on top of your camera. Uh, if you're doing something where you have a mic mic'd right here, then the autofocus isn't gonna be a problem. 
Uh, majority of the time, if I'm using this lens, I'm gonna be shooting at a manual focus for video. Here's something I found out that if you're shooting this in autofocus, okay, this is on the lens, you're focusing, and then all of a sudden you're like, dang, I need to just tweak this just a little bit. You pop the clutch back to go to, to, go to manual focus, and immediately the focus goes totally wacky. Uh, the reason being is this focus ring is like a set focus ring. Unlike some Fujifilm lenses, uh, like the 56 1.2, it doesn't matter where the ring is. It, if you switch from autofocus to manual focus, it's going to stay focused on that same point, and then you can just tweak it a little bit. This guy, because it has a set section on the focus ring, we'll say if, I, if I'm on infinity focus, right, and I have the clutch up, and then... I'm using it auto and I'm like, dang, that's just out of focus just a little bit and something's pretty close to the lens. I switch it to manual and I pop this back to focus it manually. Immediately pops the focus back into affinity focus. So now I've got to crank the focus all the way back and find focus. It's just kind of a pain that that's a, a thing that this lens does in manual focus. But besides that, everything's smooth. The aperture ring does the signature uh, little clicky click. Works really well. Uh, besides the autofocus and video mode, if you shoot manual, which I do primarily the time when I'm shooting video with this lens, the autofocus doesn't matter. Just don't try to switch between the two because that's when you run into that problem. Okay, this section of the video, I wanted to take you over to my computer and I wanted to show you a couple pictures that I've taken with this lens and kind of just show you what this lens can do. Okay, there's going to be a couple food shots, there's going to be some uh, family portrait shots, and then also uh, just some beautiful self-portraits of myself um, that my wife took for me. But uh, So let's jump into it. So uh, this first one is a milkshake from Burger 21. It was kind of disappointing that Burger 21's kind of hit or miss. As you can see, this lens gives you some pretty good separation uh, from the foreground and the background. Uh, you can kind of see what I'm talking about with the fringing over here in this picture. It's not very bad, um, but you can definitely see it. Uh, this lens is definitely sharp. You can see the uh, the little chocolate flakes here on the, the the cream on the top of the milkshake. But overall, uh, it takes some beautiful pictures. So let's go over here to the next one. Here's a, a chicken sandwich from Burger 21. You can definitely tell that the lens takes a sharp picture. It's It's pretty nice. Here is a photo of my wife, Kayla. Follow her on Instagram. I'll throw up her tag right there. She, uh, she takes some mad good pictures of me, but she basically talks about lifestyle and beauty stuff. So if you're into that, go follow her. But uh, yeah, this lens, super sharp. I like this lens because it's, it's a 35 millimeter equivalent, so it's very uh, perspective of what you would be seeing uh, if you were there at the moment. So you get a little bit, you can get some foreground elements uh, to really add some depth to your photos. And as you can see here, uh, the railing, you can you can see the detail. There's, there's not a lack of sharpness when it comes to this lens. Um, here's a, a photo of myself in a parking garage. You can see the detail in my hair. Uh, these pictures are slightly edited with Capture One. So if you're wondering what I'm using to edit these pictures, it's Capture One. Capture One is the best thing to edit Fujifilm pictures with. Um, over here, you can see what I was talking about where there's uh, the, the fringing. Uh, if you look at the edge of these light squares here where the light and the dark or the dark and the light are transitioning, the lens just doesn't handle it very well when it's that abrupt. You can see on me, it, I don't have any fringing because I'm not really backlit, but you zoom up here, over here to this corner, and bam, there's your fringing. Um, overall, it's not that big of a deal. I think it can add a cool aesthetic to a picture, but overall, it doesn't really bug me. It's just a downfall that it does that. Here's that family shoot I was talking about. There's eight people, captures it beautifully. Uh, you still get that background separation. And uh, the colors, the colors come out of the camera really great, really editable, uh, just like any Fuji file. Editable. I guess you can eat them. But uh, here's another picture. Here's another picture from that family shoot. Uh, they're just mad adorable. But uh, as you can see, where, where this lens really starts to shine is here in this element where you have 
a couple subjects where you can get closer to them, you get more of a background, but it's still very well separated. Uh, in this situation where there's nobody really backlit, you don't have to worry about the fringing, the lens is still very sharp, and uh, the colors come out great. So with this lens, I've come to find out that if you don't hit focus, tack, you don't get tack focus, you know, it's not super sharp, that's when the fringing is going to come into play and really kind of mess with you. Uh, as, as long as you understand that that's the downfall of this lens, everything else is a massive positive. Uh, it could just be my copy, I don't know. But uh, here you see that I'm focused right here on the ring and uh, right here, right after you get the fringing on the hands. So overall, that doesn't really bug me that bad, but I'm just trying to be very critical because I like this lens so much that I'm disappointed that it has that little flaw. But besides that, I really enjoy it. Oh, uh, I guess here's me back eating that uh, shake. As you can see, you still got that good separation, still very sharp. Um, you can see that I didn't shave like I didn't for this video. I'm going for my uh, Shaggy from Scooby-Doo look right now. But uh, overall, really great. You can kind of see purple fringing happening because it's just out of focus just a little bit. So just creeps right in and gets you. But besides that, really good. You got fringing here on... Uh, you got fringing here on my little drawstrings for my hoodie. Besides that, I mean, I love this lens. Super sharp, great separation. It's a really good 35 mil, or 35 mil equivalent. All in all, I would buy this lens again. Okay, I just want to say thanks for watching this video. I hope that it helped you. Uh, if you're wondering about getting this lens, I would totally recommend it. If you're comparing it against different Fujifilm lenses, let me know in the comments which ones you're, uh, you're thinking about buying. Uh, I strongly recommend this lens. I really like this lens paired with the 56 1.2. Uh, I think that that makes a really good uh, kit. You, you get one Fujifilm camera, those two lenses, and you're off to the races and you're good to go. I think the colors match really well with those two lenses. Uh, everything. I just I love that set. The, the 23 and the 56. I think it's a really good matchup. So if you're wondering about getting this lens... I would recommend it. If you're looking to get it as a starting lens where you have no other Fujifilm lenses, you're looking to get a body and a lens, this is going to get you through a lot of things. Uh, it's it's really good close up. You can get pretty close. You can get about 10 inches away from the lens. Uh, that's good for video, photo, if you're trying to shoot like uh, wedding rings, little details on products. You can get pretty close, but then you can also take a couple steps back and boom, you're at a wide shot. So. Uh, it's a very versatile focal length, versatile lens. Besides the focusing issues, besides the focusing issues for video and the fringing, I've got nothing bad to say about it. Thanks for watching this video. If you could take two seconds, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. Uh, like I said, let me know in the comments if you're looking to buy any specific Fujifilm lenses. I'd love to help you out. And uh, follow me on Instagram. That's where I post pictures. So uh, I'll chat with you there.